And in other political news, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan does not think former President Trump should seek re-election in 2024. The Republican is also discouraging members of his own party from voting for Mr. Trump if the former president decides to run. Governor Hogan made the comments in an interview with CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa. Governor Hogan, thanks for being here. Thank you. You're heading to the Reagan Library uh, tonight, Tuesday evening. What's your message for your Republican Party? That there's a better path forward, that uh, you know, we've got to take our party uh, and our nation in a different direction. Uh, I'm going to focus on some of the problems and issues that I think uh, we're facing as a, as a Republican Party and uh, as a country and, and talk about uh, you know, uh, going in a more positive direction where we can get back to winning elections again and, and get back to governing and actually solving the real problems that are facing us. Are you leaning toward a 2024 presidential run at this point? You know, I'm not really leaning one way or the other. I'm, uh, obviously, I've said I want to continue to be a voice uh, in, the, in the Republican Party and a, a voice in the country. I've still got a really important day job until next January uh, that I promised the people of Maryland I was going to do as their governor. But uh, we're certainly going to be a part of the discussion. Uh, when do you make a decision on, on, the, uh, on a possible bid? I think you would have to look at that sometime, uh, sometime next year, certainly not, not this year. I don't think I would do anything before I left being governor. Is there room for a Larry Hogan in today's GOP? You know, that's why I guess we'll find out. Um, I, I, I believe that there's a big chunk of, of folks out there that are really frustrated uh, with the direction of, uh, of our party and frustrated with the, what's going on in Washington today with the Democratic monopoly. And I believe in the Republican primary base, there's a good chunk of, you know, th probably 35 uh, percent of the voters who do not want to go in the direction that we have in the past couple of elections. That's an opening for someone looking at 2024. If you firmly believe, based on data, based on your assessment, there's a 35 percent chunk of the electorate that wants something different, maybe something that's non-Trump. Well, if you look at the 2016 election, you know, there were 16 people running, I guess, and uh, Trump won some of those early primaries with 20 percent of the vote or somewhere to that effect, maybe less. I think there are going to be a big crowd of people in this race, uh, and I think they're all going to be sort of fishing from the same pond. Uh, I think there is a wide open lane of uh, 35 percent. Are you talking to former Governor Christie or some of your other allies in that wing of the party, or at least near that wing, about consolidating ahead of 2024? Well, look, the, one person? Uh, you know, I've talked with all the leaders of the party and continue to do so. Chris Christie's a good friend. Uh, we talk pretty often and regularly and, uh, and openly and frankly. Um, and I think we're, we're all trying to see what role can we play uh, in uh, moving the, the party forward. But, uh, yeah, it would, be, it would make more sense if we had, uh, you know, uh, some, some agreement on, you know, what, what pe each person is going to do and uh, who's got the best shot. What do you make of former President Trump just hanging around the Republican Party even out of office? I don't think that surprises anyone. Uh, you know, uh, former president likes to be the center of attention. Um, I think he's enjoying uh, continuing to be the 800-pound gorilla, and he, he likes people coming down to Mar-a-Lago and kissing the ring. And, uh, he, you know, he, uh, he's not going away quietly. We didn't expect him to, right? But I don't think he's going to run. Uh, but if he does, you know, that, that wouldn't impact my decision. Why don't you think he will run? I just think he's uh, enjoying playing golf five, six days a week. I think he uh, doesn't, his, his ego wouldn't take losing another election. And uh, you know, I think it's, uh, he's not getting any younger. Should he run? I don't think he should, no. I think it'd be better for the party if we uh, moved on and uh, looked towards the future rather than uh, you know, uh, going back and repeating. You know, the def definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You know, it was a terrible four years for the Republican Party. We lost the White House, we lost the Senate, we lost the House, we lost governors, we lost uh, state legislative bodies. And I want to get back to winning again, like, uh, like we've done here in Maryland. What about a political ally of President Trump? You, you see others out there, like Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. You've called his moves with the Disney company crazy. Well, I just don't think, uh, look, I don't know the details of, of uh, what's going on in the Florida schools or what, what he was trying to accomplish with the bill. But to say that Disney can't express their opinion or else we're going to punish you, uh, that just doesn't seem like you know, the way we should be doing things in America. Obviously, parents should have a, just a, a voice in what happens with their kids in school, and uh, we shouldn't be indoctrinating kids, but you shouldn't be silencing 
uh, and canceling you know, your largest corporation just because they have a different opinion than you do. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think uh, we, we don't need uh, Donald Trump and we don't need somebody that's a, a, a cheap impersonation of Donald Trump. Does Florida Governor Ron DeSantis fit your definition of a cheap impersonation? Well, look, I think there's probably you know, a long list of people that could fit into that, uh, but uh, you know, on we the don't list? have time to talk about all well, of them who's in on a the short list? interview. Who's it's a, a, you know, who's not on the list? You say, <laughs> you say there's a long list. Let's go through it. Yeah. Who's on the list? Yeah, I, I don't want to get into, you know, you know, just personal shots at each of the potential people that may But run. voters are probably well, curious. Who does Governor Hogan Ron believe DeSantis on the list? DeSantis has to win his re-election first down in Florida, and we'll, we'll see what happens in, in 24. But, uh, you know, I, I just think we ought to go in a different direction. You keep saying the Republican Party should move on. Up on Capitol Hill, not far from Annapolis, Maryland, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy was recently shown on recorded phone calls talking about his frustrations with then-President Trump, maybe even talking about resignation. Then he's walked back that kind of conversation since then. What is your take on Kevin McCarthy, how he handled January 6th, and how he has responded since? Well, I, I think uh, you could say he, he really hasn't done a very good job of, uh, of either one of those or of communicating or being direct and honest. Uh, you know, I did it about just the opposite. I actually held a press conference uh, the day after January 6th and said that uh, uh, tr Trump should step aside and let Mike Pence uh, finish out the term until the, uh, t until the inauguration. You know, I sent in uh, members of the Maryland National Guard and the Maryland State Police to, to stop the insurrection. So there's no equivocating about where I was on January 6th. I thought Kevin McCarthy's comments on January 6th were good and, uh, and, and pretty strong. Then he sort of backtracked and went to Mar-a-Lago. I just, I think it's, it, people are just frustrated with politicians who uh, say one thing and mean another or don't say what they really think. Do people care about the truth inside the Republican Party these days? I think they do. I think they're concerned that they're not getting enough of it. And I, I think, uh, but you have to, hopefully you're going to see some others that have the courage to stand up and tell the truth. What do you say to your friends in the Republican Party at the gubernatorial level, like Governor Ducey, uh, who continues to be relentlessly attacked by Trump for not endorsing Trump's lie? Right. Well, I, you know, I'm on, I've been on the executive uh, committee of the RGA for eight years, and uh, Doug Ducey and Brian Kemp, uh, they're, they're good friends, and I've been supportive of both of them. Uh, it's outrageous that, uh, you know, that both of them are, are strong Trump supporters and conservative governors who've done a great job in their state, and they're being uh, blown up and attacked uh, relentlessly simply because they would not... Uh, you know, violate the Constitution and overthrow a uh, free and fair election and not lie about what happened in the, in the last presidential. It's, it's absurd and ridiculous. If Governor Kemp survives his primary in Georgia, will that be a statement about Trump's political standing? Well, uh, Governor Kemp is going to survive uh, his primary, and it will be a statement. And I think... Uh, what would the statement be if Kemp wins? I think it, that uh, you, you don't have to be afraid of Donald Trump and that you don't need his endorsement to win an election. And Robert Costa joins us now from Cincinnati. Um, hi, Rob. Really interesting uh, conversation interview there. Can you tell us a little bit more about some insights uh, from your interview with the governor? Our CBS News team went to Annapolis, Maryland, the capital, to talk to the two-term governor. And it's evident, based on our interview, that he is beginning what could be a long, very uphill march to a presidential run in 2024. The question I asked him remains pertinent today. Is there room for Larry Hogan in Donald Trump's Republican Party? The answer very much remains to be seen. He believes there's a coalition inside the GOP, despite Trump's continued presence on the scene. Robert Costa, excellent insight, interviewing Maryland Governor Larry Hogan. Thank you, Robert.